Right, uh, I thought I'd do this. This is real time, it's like quarter past 12 in the morning Australian time, so US markets, the S&P cash markets has been open 45 minutes. Just to fill people with what's going on. Um, so you'll see from the videos I've been posting like the last week or 10 days or whatever, um, this is, we're in the middle of this trading window where this big seller has been in. I've heard some people talk about that this is linked to options expire, right? It is not linked to options expire. Options expire is the third Wednesday of every month, right? This trading action happens on the 17th and 18th business days of each month for the past four months. And it's been like clockwork and it's happening again even as we speak, right? It's not some flash crash that I've heard some clown refer to. It's not a flash crash at all. This is a big sell order that comes in on the 17th and 18th. It's not some miraculous bounce off the 50 EMA where the sellers just, where the buyers just come in and they say, oh, the 50 EMA is supporting, so we're going to buy it. It's not that. It comes back because the seller finishes their business, right? They're out of the market. And, they can, and the market comes back, right? Because the seller's gone, right? This is the way the industry works, right? So this isn't so much technical analysis. This is actually using technical analysis as an insight into what is going on in the industry. This seller could be something like you know, Bridgewater, like Dalio, right? Some insiders, could be a few of them coming through saying, mate, this is time for us to lighten up our equity risk and this is what they do, right? And you can see it, there's patterns, right? It goes over two business days every time, right? Now, you gotta adjust for weekends and the times here are, you know, they're Australian times at the bottom, right? But this is uh, in May, right? 17th of May, midnight here, that's open a business 17th in the US, right? The selling happens two days later, the selling's gone, right? So that's the, close of uh, that the start of trading on the 19th it's all back right the 17th and 18th. you'll see a few things there's gapping action in here right it is volatile it's a big move three percent here right similar thing this one's over a weekend which is why it's over four days right but it is ding to the dong right that's the same thing the selling comes in it starts on the, the 17th like the trading day you know goes through the next business day, and then after that, it's it's gone. And in this case, it's the 21st that it's off because of the weekend. Same thing here. You see a big gap right in the middle of this trading action. Huh. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? This is what happens because they're trading the futures as well. Right? This is what fundies do. People say, look at the cash, look at the cash. Your God ignores the futures. You've got to listen to the futures market. If you don't, you've got rocks in your head, mate. It is part of the market, right? I used to trade interest rate options books. I've traded currency options books. I traded like an interest rate options book during September 11th, right? I was up all night trading that book, right? Same thing, right? When you are uh, trading a book um, at, at an investment bank, which is what I was doing, not just punting around in my lounge room, right? You're trading the futures. The futures matter. These are global markets that you deal in. It's not just the cash. So here it is. So again, this is like it starts on the the, the 17th, the morning of the 17th. It kind of starts off. Um, it's the sorry, it's the 16th because the 17th was a Saturday. Um, I think it's 17th was a Saturday. Or whatever it is. But the, you know they're the they're the good business days. The 20th is off two business days over the weekend. Same here, back in June. And again, you can see this big, it wasn't kind of gapping, it was over, over, over two days here, but it's very volatile, right? gappy like given the size of the, these candles. Same thing, 2.5%, 3%, you know, 1.7%, just a little one. <laughs> um, you know, and then, you know, 2.8% there. Um, and we're doing exactly the same here. Look at this, surprise, surprise, there's another gap, right? And it's same thing, it started, the trading day was the 17th, 18th and 19th, it's the Saturday and Sunday. So the Monday, right, which is where we are now, it's coming through and what is going to happen here? Now, that is the pattern that we're in. I said, I've been talking about it like since last week and, and shorted it around here, right? Because 
once the action's kind of started, it's a bit too late. I, know, I think I've seen some guys come out commentating on these days, and they came out like once it already started. Like, as I said, like if they're watching the market and doing these videos for so many years, and they're such like gun traders, right? God, I hope they were talking about this in their private chat rooms because they should have been talking. I mean, I'm in, I've been watching this market this closely, right, for like a little while. Oh, I, I know it's around about here, right? I'm embarrassed that I didn't see it like earlier. I mean, that's just a goddamn embarrassment. I'm an Australian, right? So I'm only watching the Australian market. So this is what's, um, you know, really uh, going on. These are the windows. We're in the middle of the windows. Now, this window is a crucial one um, for a few reasons, right? When we go back and look at the, um, the daily, let's just get rid of like all this junk here. Get rid of it all, right? You can see that we have broken um, uh, the trend line. Um, when I look at these long trends, it's nice to look at it with the, you know, the the, the lines, right? You know, um, you know this this is the daily in the in the in the cash market. I prefer to wipe out this noise. Here. You can see it. It is it is clearly broken. Um, and on a and at least on a on a daily uh, time frame, this is potentially the end of the rising diagonal, which is why we need to be very um, careful of it. Um, when you look at it on the weekly, it is very clear. Right? You know, you can really see it there that it, this is like totally pincered and topped out. Right? Uh, a little bit, a little bit more noise like on, on the on the daily. Um, so that's one thing you can see here, again the gap you know this is like a, a bit of a um like a bare flag um you know boom 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 and you know where it is um now let's, let's just line these things right up right where it is now it's at quite a quite a critical level for a few reasons this is a bit of the one-to-one -one. that's one level um another one is this previous low and it is just singing below it. The the open was pretty good, right? Um, but it has started to um, sink, which is what I expected, because I suspect this seller is, is coming in and doing their thing. Um, so again, it, it, it's broken this trend line, right? A big trend line. It looks like it could well break this previous low here, right? Which is not a not a particularly major one, but once it breaks that one, then it starts becoming fresh air, right? Down here to 4,200. Now, if it breaks down there, that is going to be a, a that's going to cause some real technical damage, and will stop people out. While these retail punters will start sheeting themselves, and will be wondering what's going on. They will be dusting cash. And then I would say it's going to open up pretty quickly. Um, 4,000, you know, which is bang on this 20, you know, the, the 23.6 retracement. And you can see it is, you know, that 4,000 level. I mean, 4,000 is like a key psychological level, but it did a bit of work getting through there. You know, you can see there, that was a bit of resistance. And there ain't, there's gap. There's a gap in here that was never filled. Right, see that one? A lot of other gaps were filled. Like, you know, this one here, you know, that was kind of backfilled in there. This one, that one was never really kind of backfilled. A lot of the other ones were, you know, like these lows, they kind of came back. So it's quite susceptible to coming back and doing a little bit of bit of homework, a bit of revision, shall we say, in there. Um, now, if we go down like a, like a tighter time frame, we can see some of the damage that's unfolding even as we speak. That was a key level, that kind of previous high here, but I guess more so here, those previous lows. Um, and you can see where it opened, this opening candle. Let's go down, let's take it down a little bit, uh, bit finer. Um, you can see this level here, which was the low, um, of the previous kind of selling of this seller, 
this seller on the 17th and 18th, where it recovered from on the 19th. Now that was after they'd finished it hit that. This is while they're still going, right? or as I suspect, while they're still going, and it's doing a bit of hard work here. It opened up below it, bit of a strong open after the gap, and has gone ba-doing, ba-doing, ba-doing down. That's a pretty bearish you know, kind of signal. Um, and so it is clearly having a bit of a struggle at this low here. Of course, if it breaks it, breaks it, that will be at least one lower low. You know, high, you know, high, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, high, and that would be a lower low there. Um, so that's where we are at this point in time. It's pretty precarious. As I said, when you look at that 17th and 18th, don't listen to what the other Muppets kind of say, look at the time frames. And it's not a technical story, right? It's not some conspiracy theory around options dates, around option expiry prices. As I said, I run option books for businesses, for, for business, for banking business. I was an investment bank, I worked there for like you know, over 20 years, right? Running risk, running as a trader, um, running books myself, running teams of traders. We don't have some conspiracy theory about ganging up against retail punters on strikes, right? That's not how trade professional traders trade. Professional traders trade vol. We don't trade the strike per se, we trade the vega, right? And then when we hedge it, we delta hedge it, and we gamma hedge it, right? And if you don't know what delta and gamma, gamma hedging is and you don't know what vol is, you shouldn't be trading those options to start with um, because making money off you guys in terms of the vol spread, that's where we, where I used to work, we make money and a lot out of it out of you guys. We don't care really where the strike finishes up. You know, we manage our books. We're kind of pretty good at that, right? Um, and um, there's no conspiracy theory to kind of target a particular strike. And often, right, the market does gravitate towards strikes because those strikes are inevitably at nice psychological levels and there are traders like gamma trading around it, right? From both sides, from a short and a long perspective. You know, that's what happens right but it's not some conspiracy theory you know which drives me nuts when people make up that stuff and they say oh, wall street they're really trying to make sure these ex options expire worth it so they don't pay you out so that's not true they've already hedged them they've made their money on the vega right it's not about paying you out their payout or for me when i read books my payout was very different i didn't trade in a directional sense in terms of the way a retail guy would i trade in terms of the vol right so the profits are locked in before you even get to expire. Same. Anyway, um, that's enough of that hobby horse, but you can see we're at a precarious point. The seller, if anything's go by the last four times, they could have more to do. They could push it. And if they push it, it's gonna trigger some technicals. Having said that, it already has moved down, like, you know, this, uh, like, you know, really the, 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 the two plus percent, like three percent, that has, that they've moved at the market before. So there is the chance where they, they may have actually moved their trading um, forward a day. Right? Or, you know, they might have pulled up stumps and they said, oh look, let the market do the work. I don't know, right? But if the last pattern is anything to go by, What's unfolding here has got all the hallmarks of exactly what's been done before, where it'll continue to sell off today, and then beware tomorrow because if they're out, um, then uh, people will be buying at dips and they'll be buying it where there's no big seller, and that's what will cause the rally. So it's not a flash crash, right? Anyone who tells you a flash crash is like full of shit. It's not options related. Anyone who says that, they're full of shit. Right. This is a pattern of a big sell order in the market. The 17th day, the business days have been going for four months. It's happening again. And this is where we are. And it's taken the market to a quite unexpected, but um, pretty hefty, well, hefty, <laughs> hefty in terms of this time frame pullback. <laughs> in terms of like this pullback doesn't even touch the sides. And that's why I think like 4,000 for me, you know, that's where I suspect it could well, and really for a healthy market, should go. 
Have a good night, Jesse. Ciao.